All right, that's the president right there talking about the executive order he is signing right now to help veterans with their mental capabilities as they transition back into civilian life. Uh, but let's go back to Mr. Carl Rowe for more reaction to that meeting. And forgive me, Carl, uh, we had to get to that sound just as it was coming in. We're going to continue to monitor it to see if he says anything additional about DACA. But do you think they're actually going to get, and let's keep in mind how poignant this is, the, the president whom the left despises and thinks is so anti-immigrant is he going to be the one to actually provide a path forward to the dreamers, Carl? I bet she does. Um, look, he spoke with evident uh, compassion about this when the, the issue came up earlier. Uh, the, President Obama, who had the ability to d resolve this legislatively in 2009 and 10, uh, didn't resolve it. Uh, he used powers that I, I believe, frankly, he didn't have. We looked at this issue in the Bush administration of if a president could exempt an entire class of individuals from uh, the uh, immigration laws, and, and all the lawyers came back and said that was not allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, but yet President Obama went ahead and did it. It was being challenged in the courts. I think this issue is ripe for resolution. Uh, what's going to be interesting is is that if, if, if everybody was agreeing that we just got to do DACA, it'd get done. But the president says we need to do DACA and strengthen border security. And the question is, are the Democrats going to be willing to give the president some of what he wants on securing the border? For them, the issue of the wall has become, you know, a, 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 a symbol. Mm -hmm. And what's ironic to me is I remember in 2006 working with some of these same senators. 2006, President George W. Bush recommended that we create 700 miles of wall uh, some of it would be barriers to traffic, some of it would be fences, some of it would be the wall as we now think about it. And it passed the House and the Senate overwhelmingly. Uh, Senators Schumer, Senator Hillary Clinton, Senator Barack Obama, Senator then Senator Joe Biden, all of them supported building a wall on the southern border, yeah. uh, along part of the border. And what President Trump is asking for he, during the campaign, he talked about it being across the entire border. Well, uh, Secretary uh, Kelly and, and now his successor have convinced the president you don't need a 2,300-mile border wall. You need, you need more wall uh, along the border than the 654 we now have, and that's what the president is asking for. So mm -hmm. the question is, can the Democrats now say, okay, we're going to get DACA, and, and, and we're going to give the president some of what he wants on border security? We'll, well see. Well, you'd think they'd want to do it because the pressure is on. Uh, what yeah. the president has Look, said put, is there's a, there's a solution there. Go ahead, Carl. Yeah, look, I mean, the president, this extraordinary moment where he brought everybody in, I mean, look, Stanley Hoyer sitting next to him some, saying some of the things you want are, are we're not going to go for. And the president said, I understand that. That's why we're going to negotiate it. And whatever you all can come up with, I'll back. And frankly, he looks like the rational and reasonable person in the room. And he today gained the advantage in terms of the public image that, that, that's going to come out of this is the president wants to get this done. The president is being reasonable. The president is, is asking for a deal. And everybody ought to sit down and negotiate in good well, faith. Isn't that interesting? He won, he won that battle today. If you believe what you read in the mainstream media or the leftist media, he has some form of dementia. He cannot actually conduct a meeting. He cannot listen, etc. cetera. You, you see everything that they have said about him in uh, that Fire and Fury book, but you look at what was transpiring there, Carl, and it certainly seemed to me to yeah. be a very rational, in charge, in control player. Yeah. Look, we can have disagreements about whether or not he's fit for the office or up to the job or whether he ought to be tweeting and so forth, but this issue of he's mentally unsound that this, this book raises, I, I commend you my column. I'm working on it for Thursday. I think you're going to like it, but I, I'm dealing with this straight on. I think this is uh, happened before in American politics. Uh, I think it is a mistake for the Democrats to pursue this angle. I think the Wolf book is based in many instances upon thinly sourced, sole sourced uh, uh, points, and in many instances reflects not reporting, but the opinion of the writer. And I'm going to I'm going to talk about it a little bit on my Thursday column. Well, I, but starting with the issue, that, starting with the issue that you raised, uh, and I think you'll enjoy the opening. Oh well, I'm anxious to see it now. That was a good tease. There we go. Thursday's column by. Carl Rove. Um, well, yeah, they, they went after Reagan for similar things, and I remember it distinctly as a kid. Um, but but let's, let's talk about the reality of this happening. It, it gets done? I mean, they don't, they don't have a ton of time. You heard a lot of people talking yeah. about comprehensive 
immigration reform. And he said, hey, go for it. Yeah, if you can get it done, let's be realistic. That may not happen. Yeah. But, but he you said, know, once you get DACA. there, you go ahead. Yeah. He said, let's do DACA and then the next day start on comprehensive immigration. I thought that was a good way to put it. Because, look, you can reach a DACA agreement. If the Democrats are willing to say, we're, we, you give us what, most of what we want on DACA and we will give you substantially what you want on border security, they resolve that issue that builds confidence that they can deal on a whole range of other issues. This is a very complex piece of legislation. I've dealt with this in three separate times, 2005, 6, and 7. Very big, lots of issues, lots of moving parts. Best way to move forward on it is to get some sense you can get some things done and then negotiate in good faith. But I thought the president very smart, quickly said, get DACA done, and then the next day start on comprehensive. You know, one of the things that struck me was that sound that you heard Blake Rana in his piece where he was talking about just go negotiate it, go negotiate it. I mean, that is the businessman that American voters sent to the White House, as opposed to, say, the politician, the politician who may be clinging so desperately to his or her uh, own points of view that somehow there's no consensus in the middle. He also, Carl, told them to get together, to have dinner now and then. And, and to be willing to work together in ways that we used to see, but for whatever reason, we've become so divided, it doesn't happen anymore. Can they do it? Yeah. I think they can. We'll see. But I think another important thing that he said was, I will give you cover, which is more important for the Republicans than it is for the Democrats. Because remember, there are going to be a lot of Republicans who are nervous about voting for something that solves the problem of the dreamers, particularly if it allows them a path to ultimately become U.S. citizens. But the president said, I'm going to give you cover. And that is that Republicans would like to get this issue resolved. They'd like to put it behind them. But the president saying, I'm going to give you cover matters a lot to them. And on the Democrat side, I think they might have interpreted that as, well, I don't need your cover in my elections. But mm -hmm. in other words, I'm going to give you something, Democrats, that is going to allow you to go home and say, well, I, we negotiated hard and I got something out of the president. Yeah, that's so I thought that boss, was a very right? smart move. A good boss yeah, will me? say, hey, you go for yeah. it. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll take the heat, but you do what you need back, to yeah. do. Uh, and he said, I've spent my entire life in, in the heat. So uh, good move on his part. I, I, my suspicion is that was aimed in part at the cameras, but I hope it was taken uh, as serious by all the people in that room because I think it was offered in a very serious uh, Quickly, tone. Quickly, before I let you go, the fact that Steve Bannon has been uh, moved to the side, shall we say, does that help the president right now in terms of getting some kind of deal done? Biggest loser out of the Wolf book is Steve Bannon because he, the president got a chance to see what he really thought. Uh, the biggest winner out of the Wolf book can be the president because uh, he no longer has Bannon as an albatross around him and doesn't need to take his late night phone calls in which he gives him goofy advice. <laughs> Carl Rove, thank you. And uh, I'm you looking bet. forward to the column. Is it on foxnews.com? It will be shortly after it goes up in the Wall Street Journal. All right, Wall Street Journal and foxnews.com. You're going to have to come back to talk about it. There we go. <laughs> Thanks.